Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. And I'm very happy to say that uh, Amazon delivered and we got our little uh, gizmo for the camera here uh, one day early. So I'm recording this on Sunday. And uh, as you can see, we're now looking at each other's face to face. So there we go. Uh, today, I'm I'm still working, like really working on the on the Marmoset course. I've been working all yesterday, all today, uh, making sure that you guys have like a very, very nice course. I think you guys are gonna love it. I'm gonna show you some more sneak peeks throughout the week. I'm probably gonna be finishing the next couple of days. Uh, it's a small course, uh, however, I always try to make the courses as nice and as um, high quality as possible. I wanna share as much information as I can with you guys so that you can improve your 3D skills and get to that dream job that you're looking for. Now, since we're still working on the Marmoset course, uh, two small uh, announcements. Today, we're gonna take a look at the first part about notes. Some people have been wondering about what the uh, notes inside of the Hypershade of Maya do. And I wanna just take a quick uh, jab at those and show you how, in general, how they work. And um, so that's gonna be the next couple of days. I'm actually gonna be recording this in advance because I wanna focus on, on finishing the Marmoset course. And uh, we're also up and running with the submissions for our first portfolio review. This does not have to be a portfolio piece from you. It could be just anything that you're working on. And I'm gonna be sharing, so make sure to check down here on the description. I'm gonna be sharing a link to a folder in Google Drive. So it's a, it's a um, shared folder inside of Google Drive that you guys are gonna be able to drop. You can drop images, you can drop uh, Maya files, you can drop Seabridge files, you can drop any kind of uh, workable file that you want and, and I'll be happy to review it for, um, uh, for the course. If it's too heavy, I encourage you to uh, zip it on a, on a small uh, like WinRAR file or something or a zip file uh, so that it does not use as much uh, bandwidth. And yeah, that's it. Uh, make sure not to submit anything that's not appropriate. Of course, if anything that's not appropriate gets submitted, then I'm gonna have to delete it and um, we're gonna have to find another way to submit things. So I trust you guys. I know you guys are gonna behave properly. And uh, yeah, so the link's gonna be in the description. It's a link to a, again, a Google Drive folder. Drop whatever you wanna uh, drop in there. Uh, I strongly advise you write your name. So for instance, Abraham Leo, and then the name of the piece, for instance, uh, I don't know, car model. And that way I can like give you some pointers and stuff. So we're gonna have a couple of videos, probably one video, maybe two in this week, where I'm gonna review some of the pieces. If your piece is not featured, do not worry. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna download everything. I'm gonna let you know if your piece has been selected. I'll probably post a list or something or just like name everyone. And, um, and that way you know you're gonna be next up on the list, okay? So submissions are open. I'm gonna close them, let's say uh, Wednesday, okay? Wednesday on this next week, which is gonna be Wednesday, October, um, 13, that, uh, at that point, I'm just gonna close the submissions and whatever is in that folder, we're gonna go through the list in the next couple of videos. And then we'll open a new submission later on and that's how we're gonna roll. Got it. Now, let's go on to Maya and let's talk about uh, nodes inside of Maya. So a lot of people are always really afraid of nodes here inside of the Hypershade, right? Because uh, we already know how to set up materials. Most of you have seen the videos um, in the channel of how to set up materials, but there's a lot, a lot of nodes inside of the Hypershade, like on this side right here. And people are like, what do they do? Like, why are we gonna be using like all of these nodes? So let's talk about real quick about the like general um, groups in, of nodes. Now I'm gonna be very straightforward here. From all of the nodes here, it's probably more than a hundred nodes. I probably used about 30%. Like there's some notes I've never used in my life. Uh, however, I'm gonna give you a rough understanding of how those work, not precisely how they work, but rather where would you expect to use them, okay? So uh, first of all, we have all those surface shaders. Like you can see all of these categories here. These are the categories that Maya is gonna divide the notes into. And in the surface uh, part of the notes, these are gonna be materials. Now, from the Maya materials, the ones that you're mostly gonna be using, especially when doing a little bit of look dev and stuff like that, well not look dev, more like previous uh, in animation, you're gonna be using your Lambert, you're gonna be using your Blinds, and you're gonna be using your Fongs, which is like a metal, like a plastic, and like a, just like a flat material. So that's usually what you do. However, uh, we also have a layer shader that works very similar to how we use the Arnold layer shader. If you haven't seen that one before, check our videos. We have one video about that one, the layer shader in Arnold. And there's other shaders that have some sort of like specialty effects. So for instance, uh, there's some people that use the shader effects uh, or the game hair, then they, they set up the materials in Maya so that they can preview how their things are gonna look in an engine. I personally don't use those. I'm not saying that it's not useful, it's just that in my line of work or the kind of work that I do, I usually set up everything either in engine or real or Unity or inside of Marmoset for instance. So. Most of the time, we're not gonna be using this. However, there's one very nice note that I do like using, which is the surface shader. 
Surface shader is a matte shader, but not only a matte shader, it's a flat shader, okay? So sometimes, um, I've, I've, I've done a couple of works this way, where you want to create like some sort of animation, like well, usually motion graphics animation, and if you use surface shaders, you can get some very, very interesting effects uh, without a, a lot of work. So you guys know South Park, right? I'm not saying South Park uses uh, surface shaders, but if you guys are not aware, South Park, the uh, the animating uh, series uses Maya to to render everything. Again, I'm not sure if they're using uh, like flat shaders or textures because uh, I haven't seen like the whole workflow. But what they do is they just animate everything in Maya uh, because it's easier for them to to just like move things around in Maya rather than doing it in like After Effects or Toon Boom or whatever. So um, you can do a lot of very cool things with uh, the surface shader. So let's say I add here a new material and we're gonna add a surface shader and this is gonna be like uh, red. And then this is gonna be like, again, right click, assign new material. We do a surface shader and this is gonna be a uh, like blue. And then this one, assign new material, surface shader, and this one's gonna be a uh, yellow. So now if we go top view, you can see we have this, let's turn off the grid. And you can imagine that we can very easily animate these things like moving around, maybe doing like a bounce. And it's kind of like doing a flat 2D animation because we're not receiving any sort of, uh, of rendering information. And this ones you can actually render straight through, not through Arnold, but rather through the Maya software. And whatever is on the, on the screen is gonna be there. It's gonna be super, super fast. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do with uh, motion graphics and flat shapes using the surf surface shader. Also, if you, for some reason, need to create a mask, for instance, of, of your character, you can just place a plane, like black plane with surface shader and then field your object with a white mask or a white shader, a white surface shader, and boom, you have a mask. If you are having issues rendering a transparency mask, that's another way in which you could uh, cheat the system. So those are the shaders. That's the that's the first part here inside of Maya, which is shaders. Then we had volumetrics, and volumetrics again they they work a little bit closer to the atmosphere, and we've already seen a little bit of this in Arnold as well with the with the Arnold atmosphere and all of those sort of volumes. I haven't used this ones because usually when I need fog or stuff like this, I use the ones from the render engine that I'm using, but they serve a similar function for uh, Maya specific uh, renders. Displacement. Uh, the displacement shader is probably the one that we might use and uh, displacement is when you grab your geometry and at render time you subdivide the geometry and push the vertex in and or out depending on the texture. So depending uh, on how you want to place this, you can have a displacement, vector displacement or a tangent displacement. And as you can see, it will plug itself into a, a shading group, but it's not going to be in the surface shader whenever you create like, let's say a traditional um, like a Lambert shader you're gonna see that it goes into the surface shader of the element. So an object can have a surface shader, a volume shader, and a displacement shader. So eventually this guy will go like right there. This will displace my geometry. Um, later on, if you guys want, we can do like a vector displacement tutorial. It's not that difficult. It's a little bit more complex, a little bit more advanced. It's really cool, uh, but yeah, that's displacement. Uh, and then here, here's where the where the interesting thing uh, occurs. Here's where where we're gonna um, uh, focus on on today's uh, section, and uh, and then tomorrow uh, we're we're gonna talk about uh, other nodes. So all of these nodes right here, the two D texture nodes, these are what we call procedural nodes. And uh, well, not of all of them, right? But uh, there's there's a lot of um, mathematically generated textures and patterns, and you need to understand that at the end of the day, all of these nodes. What they are is just information, it's just values. Zero to one, sometimes one channel, sometimes three channels, depending if it's a color or not. So very simple uh, here. Let's say we have uh, a just a plane. There we go. And we're gonna assign a new Lambert to the plane. There we go. So if we check this out, this is, whoop, just press this Lambert here. There we go, Lambert two. And we can grab like any of these ones. We can grab the bulge, we can grab the checker, we can grab the cloth. Let's do this uh, three and let's do a noise. We're gonna do this for today. And we'll ch uh, we'll talk about the other ones uh, tomorrow. So uh, all of these nodes, what they are is they're just a way to create textures, black and white textures that we can then use to plug in into other uh, channels. So right now, this object right here, this uh, plane, let's, let's move this in, there we go. I'm trying to get everything in screen so a little bit difficult 
So right now this plane has absolutely no texture. If I grab this out color from the bulge and I just uh, get it in here and press number six, you're gonna see that now what we're doing is we're mapping this information, this black and white information into this element right here. And the cool thing about this elements is that you can actually bury uh, like different things uh, in between them and you're gonna create like a, an interesting um, element here. For instance, this sort of uh, uh, like window or grid like shape, right? Uh, eventually this thing we could use to displace for instance and create like a, like a grid. Uh, we could use to render transparency. For instance, if I were to plug this not into the color but into the transparency right here, you're gonna see that now those elements are transparent. We, we're gonna be able to see through it. It's not very obvious right now, but if we change the ground, there we go. So again, the, the important thing that you guys need to know about nodes is that they are information. Um, the most common ones or the ones that I use the most are probably like the checker one. Checker one's really good to uh, create uh, a checker pattern, but not only that, if you have like a complex object, let's see, let me import, like, let's see what object I can find here. Hopefully one that's uh, UV. Uh, what do we have here? I'm not sure if I have something here. Uh, I have this guy. What is this? Neon. We have this sweep meshes. There we go. So we're doing this exercise in one of my classes. So if I were to assign the same material, the Lambert 2, you're gonna see how the element uh, just goes through the element and through the object. And you can see that actually, since the UVs of this object are pretty clean, pretty just straight, then we're gonna have a very nice and straight uh, UV. So using the checker pattern is a good way. It's, it's kind of like turning on the checker on the UV uh, section, but it's a good way to see if your textures are gonna be uh, moving or not. Now, every single node that we just added here comes with this node that's very important called the place to detecture node. And this place to detecture node allows us to um, offset or multiply the amount of times that we see the texture by using this repeat UV. So if I say, for instance, 40 and 40, now this checker pattern is gonna be repeated 40 times throughout the whole thing. And we're gonna see this, uh, this element right here. So whenever you're doing um, this sort of like tileable textures, using the repeat UV is really, really helpful because you're gonna be able to cover a lot of areas without much of a problem. So that's pretty much it for this, guys. Now, I'm gonna talk about this one right here. And this one's really, really, really cool, which is the noise uh, modifier. And the reason why the noise uh, is so important is because every now and then, we as artists need to find a way to add variance to our scenes. And sometimes you don't wanna spend the time going into textures or substance or marmoset and texturing the object. You just want to add like a quick breakdown on the, on the, on the roughness, for instance, or on the specularity or something. Using noises, just like this procedural noises is really, really, really handy because they're gonna give you this very nice, organic, tileable uh, texture that you're gonna be able to modify. So what kind of things do we have? Threshold is like the contrast, so either, either more or, or less uh, noise. Uh, amplitude is, uh, again, the contrast, but on the opposite way. So we're gonna go to darks. And then ratio is how big or small the elements are gonna be. Frequency ratio, again, it's, as you can see, there's like a secondary noise. It's like noises that are getting combined together in this single texture. So the frequency noise is the small noise, and then ratio is like the, like the difference between one and the other. Depth max masks is, again, another thing that we can do to blend them together. Time, we can actually animate this texture. This is a really cool tool technique that you can do to, to create some animated textures. You can just click here, set a keyframe, and then go to like the last frame and move the time. And then what's gonna happen is when you play this, whatever this thing is connected, it could be the color of an object, it could be uh, the specularity of an object or whatever, you're gonna see this thing moving. Whenever they do like uh, like water and stuff, this kind of stuff is, is really, really helpful. So that's why the noise um, the noise notes are really, really powerful because they will allow you to, to create some procedural stuff in a very, very fast way. Now I wanna show you one little extra uh, note before we finish uh, today's lesson. And uh, the, the one I wanna show you is one uh, that is called the multiply. So here in the utilities node, here's where all of the like mathematical functions are gonna be happening. And uh, we can actually do a lot of things. Like there's a lot of very complex uh, like mathematical operations that we can do here. And I believe there's one that's called a multiply. If you can find it, you can always just go here. If I do multiply, you're gonna see this multiply divide. And what I can do, as you can see, is this multiply divide is accepting two inputs. So let's say I bring a checker pattern into the, uh, into the scene again. What I can do is say, hey, I wanna multiply the noise by the checker. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna multiply this by this, and remember white is one and black is zero. So what happens when you multiply by zero? 
nothing, you get zero. So what's happening here is I'm adding this noise from my, um, from my noise to the white parts of my checker pattern. And if I then output this into the color of my Lambert, then I'm gonna get this very nice effect. So imagine you wanted to do like a, let's say like a, a marble, uh, uh, like chessboard or something and you don't want to texture it, you can create procedural textures using just nodes here inside of uh, inside of Amaya. Last but not least, in the noise section down here in the color balance, you can actually change the colors. So right now this uh, noise is just black and white, but if we go to the color gain, which is the high points, we can say, hey, I want you to be red, and then we can go to the low, low points and say, I want you to be green and then we're gonna get this. Now, of course, you're not gonna see the red anymore because they're combining, remember, they, they kind of like multiply between each other. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just uh, just a variance that you can uh, create here. Maybe like I want this to be like a dark red. Let me see here, there we go, like a dark red. So now what we're gonna get is we're gonna get this sort of effect. So uh, notes, guys, very powerful tools. I don't use them as much. However, there's a lot of information out there and there's people, there's uh, technical artists that create some amazing procedural things by combining and utilizing all the power that notes have to, to give you. So uh, yeah, that's it for this one, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the video right here. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna continue looking at the notes. I wanna uh, talk about a very, very important note that I do use quite frequently, which is the ramp note. So make sure to uh, stay tuned, make sure to subscribe, share, comment, check the link down below, because again, as I mentioned, we're gonna have the open submissions for the portfolio or piece review uh, for this week. So uh, there's gonna be a Google Drive link for you to drop either a file from Maya, from ZBrush, or um, for you to drop, uh, what's the word, the, uh, what's uh, uh, just a render, like a screenshot or something. Make sure to tag your name so that I can properly credit you. And yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.